Um, okay. So, um, uh, I, I, I might as well start. I don't know how many people are here today. I can't actually see all the... Um, we have eight. We have eight. I normally get eight participants, right. Um, okay. So, um, I, I have to start this chapter with a bit of a disclaimer um, in that um, this chapter was added two or three weeks ago by um, Hadley and um, s something we've experienced earlier on in the, um, the, the, the book club uh, is that the Mastering Chinese is a bit of a moving target and, and, and a lot of the con pretty much all of the content really for this chapter came from the basic user interface chapter which we studied four weeks, five weeks ago. Um, and um, Jerome, who did the presentation, presented a lot of the um, code that resulted in this chapter. So what I've tried to do is to present this chapter from a different perspective from the one that is written up in the book. So with a, a, a greater emphasis on the kind of um, the, the kind of web development side of it and how Shiny approaches that rather than on those functions that Shiny provides um, and, you know, what the use of those functions leads to when you're looking at the, the, the apps. So there's a bit more on things like HTML and CSS, which are kind of the... Um, the content and the styling language of the web. Um, so, uh, but hopefully it's not a waste of your time. Hopefully I won't just be going over the same stuff that Jerome talked about uh, a month ago. Um, anyway. Russ? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, hi. I, I, um, I just have one little question. So was chapter six left out by design? The work, not chapter six, sorry, chapter five in the book, the workflow. Oh, hold on. Um, was chapter five missed out by design? Oh, in the um, the book club notes that we're generating. Yeah. Uh, so no, chapter five is actually workflow. Yeah. Um, it's just that Shamsuddin hasn't uploaded it to GitHub yet, so I haven't been able to include his notes in the uh, uh, okay, okay. the book club notes yet. I, I will um, it you. will be going in between, yeah. you know, um, between the, the ER case study and this chapter. There's a recording, um, though, uh, a video recording of it, right? That should mm -hmm. be on... Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, that should already be on YouTube. Um, yeah, um, so yeah, it, it, eventually this will be chapter six of the book, um, of the notes, sorry. Um, so what we're going to study is a kind of reverse of the order that the chapters presented in um, in Hadley's book. So in the book, he talks about the different types of layout functions that are available through Shiny, the single page and the multi-page layouts. Then a little bit about Bootstrap, which is the kind of the go-to option for styling and interactivity within of, of, of shiny developed apps um, and then talks a little bit about themes that can be constructed using bootstrap and then a very kind of brief talk about um, html and, and only really glosses over what css does um, i've kind of switched that around so there's more stuff about html and then css and then we talk about bootstrap and, and the shiny uh, tools but as I say, Jerome had already covered a lot of the single page and multi page stuff when he presented. Um, come on, speed up. Yes, um, there's lots and lots and lots of resources about um, web development in general um, and about shiny development. Um, the as as far as this uh, chapter is concerned. Um, I found the Mozilla Developer Network 
um, notes on HTML and on CSS, uh, very useful while compiling stuff for this. Um, and also there's this book, um, Outstanding User Interfaces with Shiny, which is um, here, um, which might be of interest for a future book club. Um, and it's, it's more about the, um, you know, how to, um, how to style a shiny app rather than how to kind of build and, uh, you know, less about the kind of reactive programming and stuff like that, 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 that Hadley's book goes into in detail and more about how, um, to make it an, a nice user experience, um, but it's a, I mean, it's a very good book, it, it, um, but I've had to dip into a few different chapters of that to, to find stuff for, to, to, to flesh out this chapter. Um, and yeah, we, there's a number of different tools mentioned in this chapter um, and a couple that, that aren't strictly mentioned in the chapter, but which I'll, I'll, I'll go over. Um, so the um, under the hood section. Sorry, it has the the, um, the book down book. You haven't pushed these changes yet, have you? No, no, no. Okay, okay. Just making sure. Okay, just want to see if I could follow along. Ah, right. Okay. Yeah. No. Sorry. Um, no, I've I've not pushed the changes yet. To be honest, I might move some stuff from. Jerome's notes into this chapter as well, but I'll, I'm, I'll do that after I've pushed my original uh, version of the notes. Um, so, under the hub, um, a a typical web app um, has two main components. There's the component that runs within your browser, and there's the component that runs on the um, on a, a web server somewhere in a giant factory. Um, so um, in the browser, um, HTML is the language that delivers the, the content. CSS um, is used to kind of style that content. And then JavaScript um, is like the language of the browser, basically. It handles all the interactivity type, um, you know, user interaction stuff um, that runs within the browser. Um, there's a second kind of set of um, programming skills required to write code that runs on the server. So typically what happens is as you're working in the browser, as you're clicking on things and, and stuff, requests will be sent back from your computer to the server. A quick question. Yeah. Um, um, I'm just curious, um, does this book also cover JavaScript um, or um, the book doesn't cover JavaScript? Because I know JavaScript is good for uh, front end. So is there any functions that uh, encapsulate JavaScript functionality in R? Yes. Um, yeah. The, oh, sorry. Every time I go to the top of this page, something uh, comes down. Um, Hadley's book doesn't talk about JavaScript a great deal. Um, to be honest, I've not seen any, um, any um, JavaScript stuff that isn't simply handled by the bootstrap library within Hadley's book. But um, in the um, user interfaces for Shiny book, there is a whole section. Uh, there's like um, six chapters on using JavaScript with R and with Shiny in particular. Um, I, I can't recommend uh, good yeah. materials on JavaScript so, because I'm a relative newbie in, in Layla, language. But. Layla just recommends she had another book, JavaScript for R. Okay, cool, cool. Uh, in the chat. Yeah. Um, Thank you. Oh, that, that, no, that's fine. Um, yeah, so um, 
your browser sends requests to a server. The server does some computation and sends its results back to your computer. Um, and then what you see in the browser is kind of updated based on what the server sent back to it. Um, and that kind of parallels how you write a Shiny app in that you have the, the user interface that runs, um, that, that, that kind of reflects the, um, the, the browser on your computer and the server function which reflects the functions that are running by R on a server elsewhere. So be it, you know, in shinyapps.io's server farm or, or whatever. Um, a typical web page, you can view the um, HTML for, for that web page just by kind of in your, um, when you're in Chrome or in Firefox or whatever, just clicking, right clicking on a page and then viewing either the page source or inspecting the uh, thing. And what you'll see is that a typical HTML file looks like this. So there's a, a kind of bit of a preamble and then the HTML content is split up into a head and a body. Now the head contains things like, um, that's where you, uh, you, you give kind of metadata, things like, you know, the, this file was encoded using UTF-8, uh, dependencies like the um, styling scripts and the JavaScript scripts that you need to pull in to, to run that particular web page go in the head. Um, whereas things that are actually presented to the user go in the body of the page. Things like, you know, um, the um, headings and the paragraphs and things like that and, and images and whatnot. Um, so it, it, it has a similar kind of structure, in a way it has a similar kind of structure to, to our markdown in that you have the, the YAML header that kind of defines um, um, how that file is to be um, rendered, um, be it as a PDF document or as an HTML document and, and various ways of formatting those documents, you put in the YAML header and then in the rest of the document, you put the content. Um, additionally, um, you have these um, element tags for a heading and a paragraph and things. So in addition to writing content, you also have to um, explain what what type of content that is. So um, so I guess that's a, a slight difference from from markdown, but I think the you know the code chunks and stuff like that and um, how you distinguish the different sections of a, of a document, a, 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 a similar way of kind of um, um, explaining the semantics of a file. Um, so there are tools to write. Um, it, HTML is just plain text. And there are tools to write that uh, functions and whatnot available within Shiny and within HTML tools, which is a, a package upon which Shiny depends. Um, so if you're writing a, a user interface in Shiny, this is about as simple an, a user interface as you can, you can write. Um, so it's just a, a fluid page, but with no um, uh, text output or anything like that. If I save the output of that into a variable and then print the contents of that variable as a, a string. It just looks like this. So this is um, an HTML element called a, a div. Um, it's got an attribute for class that says that it's a container. Um, and then there's nothing, there's no actual content within that um, HTML element. Um, what that 
corresponds to is the body of a um, HTML document. You don't get the HTML head uh, printed out when you when you when you do this kind of thing with the the, the shiny user interfaces. But there is a, to, a a kind of private function within Shiny that you can use to view what the whole HTML file will look like. So this uh, render page on that trivial user interface will generate um, an HTML file that looks like this. So the head of the file looks like this. There's lots of scripts pulled in. Um, come on. Right. So there's this is a, a CSS file for styling according to Shiny's rules. This is a JavaScript file for that explains kind of Shiny's interactivity uh, functions and things. Um, and the body is just a single line can explaining that there's a, a fluid, uh, you, you know, with something, were there any content in there, it would be housed within a, a kind of um, a, a fluid page. Um, da, 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 are the dependencies of the site. So yeah, um, in addition to using the shiny functions to generate HTML, you can also write raw HTML using HTML tools. Um, Did we lose Russ? Yeah, I guess we lose him. <laughs> oh yeah, we lost him. Anybody want to catch up and uh... Uh, imagine what he would have said. <laughs> yeah, maybe Layla. <laughs> maybe Layla can catch up and continue. I have no idea. The stuff is not on the book down. <laughs> um, I actually like his mental model um, where he um, start with showing how the HTML is really um, and explain how to write the HTML concept um, using the R packet. I think it would have been good also for the book to also show the uh, skeletal structure. This is the HTML. Maybe some people don't mm -hmm. know don't know what it is and now say, okay, we use um, package to encapsulate all those rubbish to automatically generate this for you. <laughs> yeah, I like the uh, mental model for the rows. So he was not going to get into single page and multi page layouts, but uh, he was still talking about if we look at that book itself under the hood and talking about the, the framework of HTML, like Sham was just saying, uh, he didn't get to the inclusion of tags yet or divs. Um, yeah. Or uh, book. Well, I think the difference is, is that the book is really saying like how we can edit certain parts. I think Russ was kind of going over like how to do it yeah. completely in HTML. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I don't really know how to build on this. Um. Yeah, there is a, uh, a say, link to outstanding user interfaces. Okay, I'm sorry. He just posted on the on the Slack. Uh, he had um, an issue. Two year old pulled the plug. <laughs> That's what he wrote in the. Ah, okay. 
Ang ano nila ito? Wow. <laughs> okay. So, he'll be, he'll be back on. Um, Lela, what, what are you saying? No, nothing. I was just I was just skimming through chapter six in the book and I was trying to find the resources and I see the outstanding user interfaces with Shiny. Okay. Um, <clears throat> that was referenced uh, also in the book itself. So I'm going to bookmark right. this. <laughs> so I uh, there is um javascript for r that's cool <laughs> for the yeah whole i've been trying to get into that but i haven't had a chance yeah i will go after this book but not now <laughs> yeah <laughs> No, I need to get through advanced star and tidy models. Oh yeah. It's impressive how many books are being shared. Our books are being created recently. Uh, being um, online uh, with Booktown. It's amazing. <laughs> no more dead tree copies. <laughs> <laughs> I need to buy the dead tree. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry everyone. Um Uh, can you hear me again? Yes. Um, my uh, my two-year-old daughter pulled the plug out of the router. Um, so uh, I, um, she hasn't done that yet on the book club. So I'm, I'm quite quite pleased that she's only done it when I'm presenting. Right. Let's let's zip through this. Okay. Um, uh, well, that's embarrassing. Uh, can you see the full? Um, you can see my um, kind of. Chrome browser, is it? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yes. Yeah, cool. Right. Um, so you can write raw HTML, um, and that will be appended on top of, you know, if you if you've got some raw HTML and so a shiny function together, um, the two will be appended together. So this is the the raw HTML that we wrote using HTML tools. This is the HTML as written by Shiny, and they're combined together into a container. Um, and also, there are these helper things um, that are provided by HTML tools, but which are also exported by Shiny. So you can use them to add. This is a the uh, most prominent um, heading on a um, in an HTML file is an H1. Similarly, there's H2 and H3. Um, you can add. Um, a bullet list using um, this tags dollar ul um, syntax that, that's available in HTML tools. I'm not suggesting that you would you would necessarily do this while developing a Shiny app, but it's, I think it's quite useful to know how Shiny is constructing the HTML from which your um, Shiny app is is um, um, so presented when... to the world. Question. So just to make sure I have my understanding correctly for when I teach this, I actually teach the shiny module in our class <laughs> uh, for students. So I, the way I explain it is that essentially when you have your, let's say your, you have your UI in your server and in your UI, you decide to put a, um, a text input, one of these kind of, things, one of these, I call them widgets, yeah. uh, is essentially what it's, what it's doing is building that, uh, the shiny is building, shiny is essentially putting together the HTML and the JavaScript to have the interactivity and the use and what you are seeing on the screen. Mm -hmm. And is, is that, Is that accurate, or am I missing something? Um, yeah, uh, yeah, I think that's that's that seems that that's right. I think, yeah, I mean, the a lot of it's um, already bundled, ready for your use. I mean, the um, the the UI that you would write um, when combined with a, a kind of typical shiny. Um, this wrapper, what, what was it I used earlier on? 
it was called um, render page. If you've mm -hmm. got a, a user interface and, and, and use render page on just the user interface, not the server function, yeah. um, it will be wrapped up in um, all the necessary JavaScript and CSS and whatnot and the HTML wrappers and that to produce a web page that will be visible in it, that will be viewable in the browser and that will have all that kind of interactivity baked in. Mm -hmm. The server function performs quite a, quite a different role. It's it, it kind of controls what um, our functions are run on uh, a computer that could be in the cloud. It could be wherever, but it won't be in the same office as you typically. Um, so yeah, because yeah, I see in a bunch of scripts. So when you scroll back up, you see a oh, bunch sorry. of uh, yeah. See here in this HTML, all the script tags that are calling the libraries is, and those are all invoked by Shiny. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, so CSS isn't really covered by Hadley in the the book, but it's it it kind of underlies how Bootstrap, um, ha Bootstrap being this kind of default for 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 Shiny, how how Shiny looks, and and the the, the kind of interactive elements are, are, are handled by Bootstrap. Um, uh, CSS underlies how the the, the styling of your app, basically. Um, you can find a lot more detail about this on um, the Mozilla Developer Network. I, I think I included that link earlier on. So, um, hold on. Is there a, um, oh, it's all right. It's in the book. I'll, I'll be able to forward it on to you. Um, but this is um, a figure within um within their um notes about how a um an html file and a css file are combined together to display content on your browser um so the raw html is loaded into your browser and any scripts that are required be they css or javascript or anything like that are identified and then loaded up um, by your browser and then the 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 content of the html is 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 passed into something that's called the dom tree which is like a um a kind of computational representation of the html structure that dom tree can be manipulated programmatically by javascript so you know there might be um your kind of fixed HTML might have a header element, an H1 or something that, that says this is the title. You can grab that element with JavaScript and change the content of it programmatically without changing the HTML file from which it was generated. Um, but yeah, the um, CSS and this kind of computational representation of the HTML are combined together to make the, the display. Um, right, where were we? Um, yes, so I was just going to show a kind of simple example of how to um, write a custom CSS file to shine, to, to style a bit of a shiny app. Um, so this is the kind of structure of a CSS file. You have, it's, again, it's plain text. This is um, any element within your HTML file that has a class name of my dash class will be colored red if this style sheet is in play. So I've written a simple little um, shiny script that has a, uh, we define a user interface and an empty server function. Um, this is a, um, heading 
with the class of my class. So what will happen is your browser will load up the HTML that results from this. It will uh, import the CSS rules and then it will search for anything within the that DOM tree that has a, a, a class called my class and then make sure that the text corresponding to that is colored red. Um, to get this to work isn't um, isn't or isn't particularly um, um, intuitive to, to me at least. When you're building a shiny app, you have your app.r file in some directory, and then within that directory, you have to add a um, a, a www subdirectory. Any file that you add to that will be um, available to your shiny app when it's deployed to the web. So if you put this CSS file it, as a, a file within this subdirectory of the the one of the directory that holds your app, it will be um, that that styling script will be available to Shiny when it runs in the uh, on the server. Um, okay, quick question. Mm -hmm. So, if I understand, if we want to have custom CSS, we need to create a folder called www, right? And yeah. put and put the CSS file inside it. Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, okay. And as you as you said, we need to call the file um, without calling www. We just implicit um, call to the CSS, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, also so, the same uh, place. That's also the same place if you want to like pull in an image. So say you have like a company a company logo. Yeah. You also put it into the www file into the www folder. Right. Um, Okay, so um, I feel like if we have a folder, we need to specify the location of the folder. I mean, then follow by. So in this case, we don't need to <laughs> specify the folder. Sorry, I'd, uh, sorry, I'd, maybe I missed that. Yeah, okay, my question is, um, if we want to uh, have access to a particular file in the folder, www, I thought we need to explicitly um, reference the folder that we are taking the file inside it. So is it different in Shiny that we need not to explicitly put, for instance, um, www slash style the CSS? Well, what, uh, I can show you how it works uh, if we do do that. Yeah. Um, okay, let's have a see. So this is an app that I've written. Um, it's the same content as just presented on the uh, in in the 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 book down thing. Um, so I've got an app dot r within this directory. It's got a dub 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 sub directory with this style mm -hmm. file. Um, now, um, if I so this is how you would pull in a style sheet. You tell. Uh, in, in your fluid page, in your user interface definition, you'd have a, um, you'd add a link um, that, you know, explains that it's a style sheet and that the format of the content is CSS. Um, the href thing tells it, um, tells, um, <sighs> When this is deployed to the web, um, it tells the uh, whatever server it is running on where to find the uh, file that you're, you're you're looking for. So this would be looking within a folder called www gotcha. for a file called style.css. But okay, um, if I run that now. stop and restart i think it's more so that in a shiny app it expects that there will be a www folder 
and that there are certain things that will be put into the folder. And so if you, if you ask for one of those specific things, it knows that it should be going to look in there. It's kind of like when you create a package and, um, and you put things, what, I think it's into the docs folder and it just automatically like pushes it up a level um, when you actually call it within, within the package, if that right. makes sense. Yeah, so this is different from the normal Markdown when you write document in Markdown. If it is inside a folder, we need to um, call uh, explicitly. Um, also, my question is, um, when Shiny app is run, um, where everything is packaged. For instance, if we run a block down or book down, it is maybe inside a docs folder. So what Shiny apps folder resides if we publish it? Where? Um, I don't know exactly, to be honest. What I assumed from, based on kind of this experiment was that anything that's present in the dub 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 folder will end up in the same folder that the html file sits in once this is all con yeah. all built into the app that is um what deployed, was the question? i might be mistaken there were you asking about deployment uh, uh yeah. um uh the question was about um what the directory structure will look like for a deployed app it, lo it would look the same so essentially um if you have let's say you were to deploy to shinyapps.io you have to include your app file and your www directory in addition to any other directories like R scripts. So a lot of my shiny apps include an R folder and a, uh, let's say like, um, whatever, a, a minimum an R folder um, where my where functions, where apps usually like a global, there'll be a global um, R script where things get sourced. So you have to deploy all of those entire directory so that it's able to find those uh, specific objects. So the style sheet will be able to get recognized um, because it's a, the root directory. With, from within the root directory, there's a dub, dub, dub folder, etc. cetera. Okay. Does that yeah. make sense? Well, anyway, yeah. Um, yeah. So, but to, to bring it back to your very first question, um, right, if I, so I've run this app. Um, and um, the, with a CSS file working correctly, this header should be read. But um, it's evidently not working. So, uh, sorry, that's with the reference to the style sheet being in uh, www. You know, slash. Um, if I reload that now with the href of just style.css, it, uh, huh, there. Once it's updated, it can find the file correctly. So it, it seemed to me that the, um, hold on, I'll see if I can, if I stop that. Mm -hmm. So it will find, yeah, so the, the href for the HTML that results is also style.css. So I think, I'm, I'm almost certain that the, the www folder gets combined with an HTML file into the same directory or something like that. I don't think it's particularly, uh, important but yeah make sure that um you have a, a kind of visible test 
when you're writing these things to make sure that your style sheets are found and, and things. Um, anyway, can I get back to the book? Um, where were we? Uh, this one. Right, so... Um, oh, yeah. Um, and with CSS, you can also write a variety of kind of custom rules to, to style different HTML elements and things with different attributes and things with different identifiers and stuff like that. Um, but Bootstrap takes a, a lot of the complication out of, of doing all that sort of stuff. Um, so Bootstrap's like a, a toolkit that I think was developed by Twitter. Um, and it's, um, it's, it, it's used in loads of different websites, to be honest. Um, it, it provides um, various ways to simplify writing CSS and various kind of JavaScript things that have already been written for you. Um, so if you need things like interactivity on a button or drop down menus or things like that, these things have already been written within um, um, book down, uh, book down, bootstrap. Um, and it kind of automatically handles things like um, um, making your site viewable on a mobile platform and on a computer screen and things like that, where the, the, the screen sizes and resolutions might be completely different. Um, you can write uh, your own um, bootstrap related theme um, using this function from the uh, bootstrap library package. Um, so these are just examples of how you'd set uh, colors and how you'd set a font. It's good to, to if you want to use a, a, a kind of custom font that you might find on Google or something like that. Um, a quick question. It's always, sorry? Um, a quick question, please. Sorry for it. Yeah. So um, this package, BSLE, encapsulate bootstraps functionality or javascript so the question is does bs theme encapsulate um, bootstrap or javascript functionality which one does it do well um it 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 it, it just handles the connection from R to Bootstrap. Bootstrap itself contains the JavaScript scripts and things like okay. that. Okay. Um, is, is that. Does that make sense? Yeah, sure. Um, uh, yeah, there's a simpler way to kind of um, customize the view of a, a site using this boot, uh, BS theme. Uh, function. Um, so you can provide a, a an overall style. Um, there's some examples actually in the um, um, the Wickham book. Um, so for example, you can um, yeah, so these named themes. This is the one I picked out in that code there. Um, so you can just set a a, a bootstrap theme by name and then use that in your fluid page like this. So for example, this is setting up the bootstrap theme darkly to be used in your user interface. And that's the syntax for doing that. Um, right, okay, so that's that. Layouts, I've uh, just kind of glossed over the layout thing because Jerome covered it in quite quite good detail. Um, but yeah, there's um, the layout functions that are available within Shiny can generate um, uh, single page formats and multi page formats. So I've got a um, a little uh, app that was like the first thing I developed in Shiny. Um, which I'm going to 
briefly talk about. So um, can I, do I have it open already? If I get, um, that'll load up. Um, so this is the code that I wrote. Basically what, what the, the, the tool does is um, it will take the identifier, a user identifier for someone on Stack Overflow, and then find um, the, the tags associated with any questions that they've answered, and then um, present a kind of word cloud of um, their uh, kind of the the spectrum of their answers. So mine um, comes up if I pull this back over here. Um, this is a word cloud of um, my answers on Stack Overflow, kind of weighted by how many stars they've received during the answers, uh, you know, from other users. Um, and what I wanted to do was to introduce an extra um, page into this app so that it would show um, the table of data, you know, the, the scores for each answer and things like that. Um, so if I go to our studio and um, so there's, if I open up this one, so this is the original app here. Um, there's a few things that I wanted to change. So there's things that I thought were a bit ugly. I mean, the, the styling's all over the place. So there's four spaces here and there's two spaces here and, and things like that. So I've, I've styled this whole thing. Then I've, um, hold on, I'll open the second app. Um, then I've rewritten some of the comments because they were inappropriate for what it was actually doing. I'd basically took a um, R Studio skeleton for a new shiny app and then hadn't changed any of the comments. So it was talking about histograms and all sorts um, that weren't present in my um, app. Um, and I've added a bit more detail. So um, this thing, it doesn't really explain what's being shown here and or what this corresponds to. Um, so, um, yes, this is the function that pulls out for a given user the um, answers that they've, uh, the you know, the kind of summed scores across all answers that they've uh, pro provided. Um, and this is the uh, function to generate a word cloud uh, for uh, a bunch of different words according to how frequently or according to a, 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 a scoring system. Um, it was pretty, I mean, it was pretty lazily written, to be honest. So um, the next thing I did was to... Um, add a table of uh, the, the kind of top answers um, and split out some the functions that were in the server. So this, previously the server function was pretty um, um, densely written. Um, and so if we run this, it should show the same thing. So you still get the word cloud coming up, but you also get um, for each different tag that's available for a Stack Overflow question, how many answers I've provided for that thing and what score. So I could change this to some other user ID. Um, anyway, um, but so how does it relate to um, the layout section of this book. So what I did was I 
um, rewrote it again. Oh no! Um, sorry, I was trying to, I was trying to replicate the. Um, so the color scheme here and things like that have no bear. It, it, it don't really connect to the. Um, that not work sorry stack overflow uh color scheme looks like this it's kind of um green and orange and such um whereas this is all purple and gray and so what i was trying to do was both introduce a um introduce a kind of multi-panel thing so that the table would be on one page and the word cloud would be on another. That turned out to be quite straightforward, to be honest. And also I was trying to get the theming to um, look a bit more like Stack Overflow. So I've took these colors, uh, sorry, these color definitions right out of the um if you look at the um so where are we in the styles section this is like the developer tools in in chrome browser um if i look at the at the very bottom of the styles section there's a thing that defines the colors and the you know the um RGB values for each color that's used on the website. Um, so I took a handful of them and tried to use them um, within the theme for this app. Um, if I run that now, hopefully that will. Yes. So um, so this is it is a, a two page version of the same app. So the tables on one thing and the um, figures on another. Um, the color scheme doesn't really work, to be honest. I need to put like a, uh, to be honest, it doesn't, although the RGB values are the same, the colors don't look quite the same to me. Um, and also I don't think going from orange to green is a sensible color scheme for going from small to you know the tags that someone's answered few questions on to the one that they've answered the most on um, but anyway so that was just a um, me kind of playing with bs theme to get different colors in place and playing with the different um multi-page views that are available in shiny um anyway Yes. Uh, oh, there was a uh, someone wanted to use um, BS theme. What was it called again? Um, chat, chat. It was called. Um, sorry, I've lost your questions because in <laughs> because of dropping out of zoom um it was the preview right uh someone wanted to see how this works um because it's mentioned in one of the exercises um so you would um so this is your primary, secondary colors, your colors for success and info and warning. So if you look at how, um, um, if you look at the API for uh, BS theme, come on. It, yeah, sorry, it looks like this. So you'd take um, 
any so basically for um for each of these colors you can um select a um <laughs> something truly hideous um and um yeah i don't know i i, I don't know how, whether i don't know quite what it was that my my question was more your your code okay to it to run <laughs> to, the code to get it to run yeah um uh, I, did, I didn't know if, do i put it in the server do i i i just had no idea where to where to put oh, it right okay yeah no all i did there was um just i all i did was run it from um run it from the console um so what that is a bs theme preview is a shiny app itself so that will open up as a kind of standalone um app and the uh, color schemes that you select from that can then be used in your own um, bootstrap theme. Um, but yeah, I don't, I, I don't, I, I don't think you um, are, are supposed to put this function within either your UI or your server function. Um, yeah, it's just a kind of. Um, tool to select a style and then once you've selected it you can oh. copy over whatever you've selected i uh, i work on r markdown and r markdown did not like it but i see <laughs> okay. i just run it in the console it works <laughs> right okay <Thanks. laughs> the same thing happened to me <laughs> yeah yeah i um the a problem i've had today has been um I've had the book down server thing running and I've also been trying to run shiny apps at the same time and uh, and all these things are trying to take over the um <laughs> take over my R session and I'm con constantly having to s stop one thing and start another and things like that and I don't know it's just been a bit awkward really um but yeah uh, so that 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 preview thing I, I couldn't get to work originally because i already had a shiny app running oh <laughs> um i couldn't work out what was going on but anyway yeah um yeah i, I don't know i mean it, it 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 certainly seems capable of making some truly hideous um things um right so that, that that's the whole of what i've got written for today uh sorry about the um 10 minutes of silence um, in the middle of it. Um, and, and also, I, I, I really didn't realize when I signed up to do this chapter that there was so much overlap with the, the chapter that Jerome had already presented. Um, and, and to be honest, I think it, it might have been better to just have skipped over this one because of the, the, the amount of overlap. But I think there are a couple of people who've joined the book club who weren't present when Jerome did that uh, thing. And also it, it gave me a chance to talk about HTML and things like that. Uh, <laughs> we, um, uh, uh, talk at a kind of lower level than um, the, 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 the presentation that Jerome did, but yeah, hopefully that's been of help. Um, and, and also uh, pretty much all of the exercises in this chapter were all were were part of the user interface chapter at the time that we did that chapter um so yeah so i haven't gone over any of the exercises here yeah um, Leila share um a book about um the question about ww um chapter 18 of one book it, they explain um, really what that section is doing uh, in the chat she shares something so i think it's good to want to check it out okay cool cool right uh brilliant yeah um so anyway i'll um i'll try and get my notes for the um book club up onto the github site uh within the next day or so 
Um, and if possible, uh, could Shamsuddin yeah, do sure. the same and we'll uh, uh, yeah. get everything? I'll push it uh, today. I'm sorry about yeah. that. <laughs> no, no, don't worry. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, so next next week, uh, uh, come on. Next week we have um, the graphics chapter. I can't remember who it is. It's either Anne or Jessica. Uh, I really enjoy today's session, Ross. I really enjoy today's <laughs> session. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, I never know whether I'm going over things that are completely irrelevant because yeah. a, lot of, a lot of the HTML and the CSS stuff is already kind of um, yeah. uh, took, it took control of by Shiny. So uh, yeah. the chances that you'd, you'd use yeah, yeah, I was I was saying when you left um, that uh, I like the mon mental model you gave for explaining the skeletal of HTML, then move down to uh, using the package to uh, automate the creating of HTML pages. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool. cool. Uh, yeah, uh, brilliant. Right. Um, well, thanks, everyone, for... Um, sticking with me <laughs> through this um uh yeah uh right okay i'll 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 try and stay connected to the uh, book club throughout next week's one um uh there's probably I, I know that we've got someone doing the dynamic user interface and we've got the next two weeks the graphics and the user feedback i don't think there's anyone doing uploads and downloads chapter so if there's anyone interested in presenting that, that would be in three weeks' time. Um, I think that was mine. Um, <laughs> let, me let me double check. I, this, is my first, uh, this is my first book club for Mastering Shiny. Okay. But I think I added my thing to yeah. the... Yeah, I think it was Oh, all... no, sorry. Chapter 11. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. Um, where am I? Here. Uh, yes, so there's... Um, yeah, so well anyway, I mean there's still still tons of chapters to choose from. Um uh if anyone wants to do a presentation sometime soon. Um and then what's that? That's probably a month and a half's worth of stuff, and then there's mastering reactivity. Um if there's anyone um who you'd like to do a talk once we've got to the end of this shiny in action section. I mean, it could even be someone like Tan or John or someone or, or, or Maya who have done a lot of shiny development um, and who are already part of our uh, community. Um, um, I'm, I, I might try and sneak someone in to do a talk that isn't a, a, a kind of chapter um, summary thing, if that's of interest. Um, but yeah, it's a case of choosing someone interesting to do the talk. Um, but yeah, um, right. Thanks for being. Oh yes, of course. Um, daylight savings time has caused a few issues over the past. Well, last week with America changing, next week with Europe and uh, changing. Um, so what will happen is I think it I think it will only affect people who are in Africa where daylight savings isn't really uh, an, a thing in in most of the countries. Um, so next week it will still be at 5 p.m. as far as UK times concerned, um, but that will mean that it, it's an hour earlier for the African contingent, an hour later Wait. for the US contingent, something like that. Or, uh, I'll, I'll send a, yeah, I'll send a time be. and date thing to make yeah. sure that everyone knows precisely when it is. Um, we should make a shiny app to, <laughs> to keep track. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, we should. Um, right, yeah, cool. Well, I, hopefully I'll see you all next week, though. Uh, thanks for coming. And uh, Thanks. Cheers. See you next. Iris, see you in 20 minutes. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.